You're listening to the Drummer Daily Podcast, the only daily podcast dedicated just to drummers. Go to my website at danielhadaway.com. Hey there, how's it going? Thank you for joining me again. I uh, hope you're doing well. I, I know I'm doing well today. I, uh, I've been enjoying, at least where I live, the, the weather has finally cooled off a little bit. Um, it gets really hot here in Tennessee in the summer. And um, at least for now, it seems like the planet has remembered that it's fall and um, the weather's a little, uh, a little cooler. So I've been enjoying sitting outside a little more uh, while I work on my computer or do some reading or watch my son play, um, whatever it is. It's just, it's a lot more pleasant where I'm at. Um, and uh, so I've been enjoying that. Um, today we're going to talk about, uh, I, I got... I get uh, a, a good number of emails from people uh, giving me suggestions uh, for what I should cover in the podcast. So I thought, why not jump in and, and cover some of those things? And also, it just helps me because there's uh, I've been playing drums for so long, I realize that there's a lot of things I don't even know that I know um, unless someone asks me a question about it. So um, if I haven't covered something that you'd like to hear about, uh, please send me an email. You can go to danielhadaway.com. There's a form at the bottom of the homepage you can fill out, or you can just email me, uh, daniel at danielhadaway.com. And, uh, and I'll try to, uh, try to answer whatever questions you might have in an upcoming episode of the podcast. Um, so today the question, uh, I've gotten, I've actually gotten this one a few times, um, is, uh, how do I decide, um, when it's time to change drum heads? Um, and then, um, Along with that, I think tomorrow on the podcast, I'll probably cover um, how I go about selecting drum heads. And I think maybe I'll just focus on the snare drum tomorrow. Uh, so, uh, and, and to get back to what we're talking about today, how, how I decide when it's time to change drum heads, um, the, uh, the, the most basic uh, stuff that I'm going to talk about applies to any drum head, whether it's a kick drum or a tom or um, snare or anything else. Um, the most kind of baseline things apply. And then as you kind of work your way up, out from the snare to the toms and then from the toms to the kick, um, there are, I think there's probably less criteria for deciding uh, when it's time. There's fewer re- fewer reasons you'd have to want to change a drum head as you work your way out from the snare. The snare is the one that has the, I, I guess probably because you hit it the most, has the most things that can... Um, they can kind of go wrong with it or can kind of degrade over time. And those would be the things that you, um, you know, look for, um, when you want to change a head. And so that, and I think the Tom, since you don't hit them very much, have fewer things. And then a lot of kick drum heads, the way they're, the way they're constructed, um, they don't, they don't have quite as many, uh, uh, potential flaws or potential ways of breaking down. So anyway, um, just a little disclaimer there before I get started. So, um, a few things that I look for, and I'm going to work from like the most obvious to the least obvious um, as far as what I what I do to figure out when it's time to change a drum head. Uh, the most obvious thing that I'd look for with the drum head, and this definitely used to happen to me when I was younger. I hit a lot harder um, than I do now, um, but it would be um, denting in the snare drum head um, where like the middle is kind of sunken in, and I. I um, a lot of times I would wait so long to change my drum heads when I was younger that I wouldn't even realize, you know, you just keep tuning them up, tuning them up, tuning them up over time. And you don't even realize that you're stretching out and denting that head until you go to take it off and switch. And then you realize once the head's loose, you see it kind of sunken in the middle. Um, so, uh, one way to kind of test for that, if that's happened to you, um, is, uh, is to detune the snare drum head and look and see if it's sunken in like that. Um, if you, if you suspect that maybe now is a good time to change your drum heads, uh, go ahead and loosen that, that any of, I mean, this happened to my toms too, actually. Um, some, but, uh, and and it can happen to the kick drum too. Uh, but go ahead and loosen that head you think might be, uh, needing to be replaced and look and see if it's kind of sunken in, like it has a crater in the middle of it. And if it does, um, that's a good sign that it's time to change that head. Um, uh, above that, um, and I do want to make a disclaimer here also with this is that I actually don't like changing drum heads. I don't like changing my snare heads, especially for me. Um, and, uh, I know I've talked before about tuning snare drums. 
Um, but for me, it, it's, you know, it's a couple of day process really for me to really get a snare drum dialed in after I change a head. And so I go through a couple of days where it may not sound exactly how I want it to sound. And so I, I, I don't, I just causes me a lot of pain. I don't like changing those heads and some drums, actually, uh, some vintage drums. I know some guys who just have never changed heads on some drums. They don't hit it. If you don't hit them too hard and you kind of like the sound you're getting, you know, you don't have to change them. There's no rule about when you have to change drum heads. Um, so, uh, I should have put that at the beginning, but there you go, right in the middle. Uh, I don't like changing drum heads and, and maybe you don't either. Um, but the second thing I'd look for, and this really applies to coated drum heads is, um, if the, uh, if the coating starts to peel off of the, uh, off of like, you know, the, the drum head. So, uh, a lot of these, co these drum heads have like a spray coating, uh, on them and, if you start seeing little spots where you've been playing the drums, playing the drum, and you see it, all, it looks clear, like you can see through the the uh, the coating down through the drum or down into the drum, uh, that's a very good sign that your drum has probably been your head's been worn out. And even if the head's fairly new, honestly, if the head's fairly new and you've still chipped things off like that, um, it might have been a defective head, and you still want to change it um, either way, um, because in my experience, a head that shows premature signs of wear is one that's really likely to completely fail. And what I mean by completely fail is uh, you will be playing it and you will punch a hole in it and it will become completely unusable. So I would just uh, just say if you notice some kind of wear that happens on your head really early like that, um, you might want to consider changing it. And I don't know if uh, any of the makers have like return policies or something like that or for defects or warranties. Um, you might look into that because I know drum heads aren't cheap. Um, and so uh, definitely, definitely look into that if that happens to you. Um, beyond those two things, like the obvious, like, you know, outer signs, visible signs of wear, um, there's a couple of more things, um, I would look for. Uh, one is, you know, if your head, and, and I'll get to this in a second about what else this could be, but if, if your head is, if the head is wrinkled, um, and you, and you, it seems like you have to overtune a certain area of your drum head to make the wrinkles go away. And you know for a fact that otherwise that you tune the head properly, um, but it's showing a wrinkle. That's another sign, kind of like that dent in the, in the, the kind of first criteria I talked about. The, it's kind of like a crater in the head, but it happens on the edge of the head. Um, if you see something like that happen, that just means that your head stretched unevenly and um, is probably pretty much shot. So uh, I would uh, probably look to replace it then. Uh, and then the, the third thing or the fourth thing, I guess, uh, that I would say, and, um, this is kind of the most, uh, subjective, I guess I would say compared to other means of judging whether your head needs to be replaced or not, but it's also really the one that I use the most because I don't dent heads anymore and I don't really chip the heads and I don't, you know, uh, you know, that I don't really see my head stretch out that much weird or anything like that. So for me, the biggest criteria that I use is honestly, if the head just doesn't sound right to me. And then a lot of times what that, what that will show itself as is even heads that are designed to be pretty dry sounding, like not have a lot of ring to them. You know, they have like, like, like uh, like Remo pinstripe heads that have that extra ring around the outside or like I'm just using Remo heads as an example because I know a lot about them. Um, or uh, like the Power Stroke heads that have that extra ring around the outside. Or even like I know Evans makes like there's like a HD dry head, which I, I've used those too on snares. They have the little holes punched around the outside. Um, even heads that are meant to sound dry, they uh, what I'll notice, the very first thing I'll notice is that they kind of seem like they lack a little bit of like that crisp uh, high-end high frequency response sound that, that, uh, real snappy, crisp sound, uh, it sounds like you're, uh, biting into a potato chip, for example, that character about hitting a drum head that you hear right when you hit the head, uh, that's kind of the first thing to go on a drum head to me. You'll, you'll, you might maintain that, that round character, that tone that you want. Um, and like I said, some people prefer that sound actually, and, and will keep it, especially on toms. They'll, they'll keep heads on toms for a long time. Um, but, uh, but if, if that goes for me, I do, I like that crisp sound, especially like I said, on my snare drum and even on my kick drum heads, people ignore kick drum heads a lot. Um, but, uh, I would say if you, if you start to sense that that's missing, uh, that would be a good sign that it's time to change your drum heads. 
Um, and so, like I said, that's really the, the biggest one for me is it just doesn't sound right. And that could be anything um, for you. Um, I would make sure that, um, and also kind of to go along with that, if I just can't seem to get it to tune properly, or if I can't get it, I know that sometimes tuning preferences change over time. Like I, I might, uh, like to tune a drum when I first get a new head, I might tune it a certain way. And then over time I slowly tune it higher or lower, or change my mind about what I want it to sound like. I would always go back and test and see, can I get, can I get my drum to go back to sounding how it sounded when I first put that head on? Um, and because that's when a head's going to be at its most responsive state. Um, so if you can't get it to go back the way it was, or you don't, you're not sure if it sounds the way it did, um, go ahead and change that head. Um, like I said, I know it's, heads are expensive, and I, uh, so it can be hard to make that decision. Um, one other thing that I will will put out there is. Um, don't ignore the bottom heads, the resonant heads on your drums. People ignore those a lot, and those you have a lot of air pushing against them. Even though you're not hitting them, uh, the air moving around in the drum can still stretch them out. Um, and so I would always, uh, don't ignore tuning them as well, because people, once they set them, they kind of forget that those bottom heads even exist. So don't ignore that, and then also don't ignore the fact that those do wear out too. I normally will change out bottom heads maybe... Uh, once for every every like every third top head change, I'll change out the bottom heads. Now the one exception to that, honestly, um, is the kick drum head. I don't really change the resonant head on kick drums unless they're damaged in some way um, or there's some kind of obvious sign that something's wrong with it. Um, so uh, those just don't play into much in the sound that I get. So um, like I said, that's just what I do. Um, I don't want you to feel like I'm trying to come at you as an authority and say this is what you should do. Um, but some people asked about how I decide, so I thought I'd share that with you. And uh, I know this episode's a little longer. I'm trying to make up for all those episodes I missed a couple of weeks ago. So uh, giving you a little extra here. Um, so like I said, tomorrow we'll talk about um, we'll talk about how I go about picking. Uh, we'll say we'll say a snare drum head will be kind of the the example I'll use tomorrow. But how I go about selecting drum heads. And uh, until then, uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Let me know what you think. Uh, please leave a review on iTunes, especially if you're uh, listening that way. That really helps me out a lot. It helps me gain some visibility. Helps me continue to be able to create these podcasts for you. Um, so uh, until tomorrow, I will uh, let you go. Have a great day. Bye.